everyone and welcome. My name is Alex and I'm going to be taking you on a very special tour today. I'm standing down here by beautiful Sydney Harbour and there's a few interesting things to point out while we're down here. Directly over here behind me we have the massive Sydney Harbour Bridge. Just underneath we have Luna Park and I'm sure you all know the name of the gigantic building behind me here. It's the Sydney Opera House. That's right, I'll be taking you on a tour of the Sydney Opera House. We'll talk a little bit about its history, its design and what happens inside. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about the land that the Opera House stands on. Today we call this land Benelong Point, but also goes by the name of Jubagali. Now who would have called this land Jubagali? It was the Aboriginal people. Now history tells us the Aboriginal people have lived around Sydney for up to 40,000 years. And the Aboriginal people that lived around Sydney Harbour are called the Gadigal people. Now the Gadigal people still retain very strong links to this part of Sydney. And I would like to pay my respects to the Gadigal people, who are the traditional custodians of this land, and pay my respects to their elders, both past, present and emerging. So everyone, let's use our imaginations. Imagine you had a time machine and you could go back in time, hundreds, even thousands of years ago. There would have been no shops here, no buildings, no place to buy food. Where do you think the Gadigal people would have gotten a lot of their food from? Well, history tells us once again that the Gadigal people used this land as a campsite, also as a fishing ground. So Sydney Harbour was always here, ready to provide. So let's have a look up onto the roof. Now, most people, when they look at the shape of the roof of the Opera House, see things like shells, sails, even waves. Other great answers I've heard have been shark fins, the mouth of a whale. Also, a lot of people see food, things like pizza, tacos, oranges, apples, even eggs. But most people see things like shells, sails or waves, and that's because the person who designed the Opera House, and we call that person an architect, wanted to make sure that the building fitted in with the harbour and the water. Now most people also think the Opera House is entirely white, but it isn't white at all. It's actually a mixture of cream, grey and off-white, and the whole Opera House is covered in these amazing ceramic tiles, and I happen to have one of them right here. Now, if the tiles are this colour, it'd get pretty dirty pretty easily. How would they clean the roof of the Opera House? Well, these tiles are very special. They come all the way from Sweden, which is on the other side of the world. These tiles have been baked in an oven three times and painted three times. So they're super hard, super strong, but also super smooth. So dirt can't stick to its surface. So how do they clean the roof of the Opera House? They wait for days when it rains, and then the dirt just slips straight off. So the building cleans itself. Now, if the whole roof of the Opera House is covered in tiles that are about this big, how many tiles do you think cover the whole roof of the Opera House? Well, up on the roof of the Opera House is a really interesting pattern. It almost looks like fish scales, or we call it a chevron pattern design. They tiled each one of those individual panels or lids down on the ground. They then used a very big crane, picked up each individual section and locked it into position on the roof. And because of that, we know exactly how many tiles there are. There's one million self-cleaning roof tiles from Sweden. Okay, everyone, well, we're finished exploring out here. I think we should go inside. This is the Joan Sutherland Theatre, formerly known as the Opera Theatre. This is the Opera House's second biggest venue at 1,507 seats. This theatre was designed with the human voice in mind because opera singers, when they perform in here, generally don't use microphones for amplification. And to help the opera singers, this theatre is entirely built out of wood. Only three types of wood used in its construction. A very hard wood called brush box that makes up the floor and the walls, a softer wood, white birch for the frames of the chairs, and a very soft pale yellow caribou pine that makes up the entire roof and ceiling. And the roof has been painted entirely black, so your eyes are constantly drawn to the action on the stage. 
And speaking of keeping everyone's attention, this theatre also has what's called a proscenium arch. It's a big frame around the downstage edge and it acts like a picture frame, framing the action on the stage so audience members always know which way to look. The Joan Sutherland Theatre is primarily used for opera or for ballet. And this theatre has its own orchestra pit, where we can have up to 75 musicians playing along live to every single performance. To keep everyone safe, the orchestra pit is fitted with a safety net. Because with the bright shining lights on you, or if the dancers are spinning around too fast, they might trip and fall and we don't want them falling down on top of the orchestra. On this stage we have wing space. Wing space is where we keep technical equipment and where performers and dancers wait before going back onto the stage itself. Also, the space above this stage is much, much bigger as well. We have a fly tower here, fitted with over 100 fly bars. We use these bars to hang things like sets, lights, props, scenery, whatever needs to go up and down. Back in the old days, to bring those bars in or to take them out, you used to manually have to haul on ropes. But this theatre has just been renovated, and so all these fly bars are now operated by computer. Because we're inside, shows need light. And I happen to have one of the lights that we use right here. Now, when you think about light, Light is not only so you can see the performers, but light creates illusion, time, place, emotion. And one of the ways we can do this is by changing the colours of the lights. And you change the colours by using these pieces of coloured plastic. And we call these gels. And you can have absolutely any colour that you like. So if I put the colour blue in front of this light, what does the colour blue remind you of or how does it make you feel? To me, when I put the colour blue in front of this light, it reminds me of that I'm underwater. I could be swimming or a fish. I could be very, very sad. I could also be very, very cold. Or it could also be nighttime. But what about the colour yellow? The colour yellow reminds me of the bright hot sun shining down. I could be in the desert. Or perhaps I could be on fire. And then the colour red. The colour red reminds me of madness and evil. But by changing the colour of the lights, we can change the mood and the feeling of the show. In theatre, we have two sides of the stage, prompt side and opposite prompt side. Prompt side is where the stage manager will be, and they'll be here at the stage manager's desk where they will call the lighting cues, the sound cues and the special effect cues. So the show will be seen every single time the way it was designed to be. Well everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've learned something new and we might see you one day here at the Sydney Opera House real soon. Bye for now.